you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Know what it is you love doing in the whole of your life. Pursue it with gusto and always assume that no matter what it is, you can build a bridge from it to your work domain. The question to ask yourself starts with, how can I? And we need to invent it. a new and radical form of collaboration. It's not about us versus them, or even us on behalf of them. It has to be well, us the great thing with about them. DS106, in my experience, is having people take what I've made and make new things from it. It's like the ultimate validation, and it's also like having a conversation Encourage with experimental person. doodling. If you put fences around people, you get sheep. Give people the room they need. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Rochelle Lockridge, I'm Levine, Marina Funes in a DS-106 thing happened on the way to a 307 forum. We are missions for our open. I don't think that's much of a blues part. <laughs> <laughs> principles of communicating in media. Uh, the, um, our, our agent there who started us the, uh, in the field, uh, his name is Jim Broom. He's kind of low on the organizational ladder. Um, but he had this idea of having students not only create uh, and express themselves in media, but do it in a domain of their own. So they, they publish in their own blog space. Um, and then it was a year later that within the organization, uh, there was this idea to open it up uh, to the world. So uh, DS-106 uh, operates along a lot of the ideas of open pedagogy, open pedagogy and teaching in the open. So it's been running for three years now in various formations, sometimes in the Fredericksburg, Virginia office, sometimes in offices in New York and Florida and even Tokyo, Japan. We've had uh, outliers of this course in action. And then we ran a super secret experiment. Well, it wasn't so secret, but uh, we decided uh, a few months ago to see what would happen if we ran a class where no one was in charge. And this was the headless operation. 
class where no one was in charge. There was no teacher. It was totally open. And uh, we, we what have, happened? Well, you have you have some preliminary chart data here. Um, this one here? Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can see the numbers there. They, they, they hopefully will impress you. Yeah, they are pretty impressive. But the open West Island. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, and this is where Rochelle comes in. Yeah, well, that's where I was wanting to go next. I think clearly you did this teacherless thing, and then you yes. thought this was a good idea for us to, to do this. So yes. Well, I had done actually the teacher one oh, okay. over the summer, and the five-week lightning class of DS106, learning how to do digital storytelling and learning how to use to be a communication communications and how to have a digital presence. Yeah. I thought this would be great. Let's take this into 3M where I'm working. Learning by actually doing it with a community of people. So I sent out a notice and to my group we have an internal thing called Spark, you know, yeah. our internal Twitter. Yeah. And I had people, yeah. yep, and I had people say, okay, I'll play with you. And we created our own little community to peer-to-peer -peer learning to be able to do this stuff. What, what, what's your sense about how is this is supposed to help the end? This, this, you know, it seemed from what I saw in, on Spark and everywhere that you know everybody was having a lot of fun making things, but but you know, the business. What what's our benefit? Yeah, benefits. Business is very very important, and of course anything that we do with the company, even if it looks like it's having fun, we're wanting to make an impact on our bottom line. And as you remember when I came here last month when we were talking about it, the culture, a change in culture can affect the bottom line by up to 30%. We do all kinds of things that can make 2 to 3% of a change in the bottom line, but the culture change. And I felt that this would help to change the culture, that we could communicate better, that we would have a better chance of doing technology transfer in the organization, that people who are actually talking to each other, having fun, they're more relaxed in what they're doing, and they're able to then go when it comes to the time they're doing their real work. They have practice in the ideas. I must say, I have seen some improvement. Some of the people that I know are involved in the experiment. I've seen quite a lot of improvement in how they're interacting and collaborating with like the rest of us. Um, so you've completed your little pilot now. Yes. So what what uh, what insights have you have you got, and how are we how are we going to bring this idea of the open web into our world? It just seems impossible to me. Yeah, this, it's a tricky thing when we are inside the firewall. Mm -hmm. And how are you supposed to? It's even people are scared to talk with themselves, even though 3M is a very open, essentially an open culture than compared to other corporations. So what we found was that people are afraid to do things. As a part of the DS-106, we write blogs, we share our process, people are afraid to do that. One of our speakers that we just heard this morning was talking about that as well. So that's, a, that's a difficult thing to do. But by example, by myself being there, being vulnerable, being able to show this is okay, there really aren't that many people watching this anyway. Just like many of your blogs, you may hit five, ten people. <laughs> and you're thinking, yeah, I've got hits on my blog. <laughs> we have the same issues. So I guess this is your idea of the report about the open organizational web that you mentioned, and your role as the, the, the patroness of this and somehow managing this and helping people? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. the, the patroness role. Um, sort of just came about making up, somebody had said, oh, this we're doing it as open discussion, mm -hmm. and just people can come in, drop in, drop out, we're discussing certain things, but we do have assignments set up. And they said, oh, it sounds like a salon. Sounds like from the, um, and so we, I went with that, and then, not very business-like, but yeah. No, not, not very business-like, and typically a salon was sponsored by a rich, uh, female patron, patroness, <laughs> and I took on that role, not a rich person, all I did is I showed up and we had once a week <laughs> to be able to come together. I did all the assignments, which is what DS-106 is about also. There aren't instructors as per se, especially during the headless one, and you do with them. So I am showing that, I'm making myself vulnerable, to everyone else, and then they feel more comfortable, and I create an atmosphere of um, that people can take risks. 
that they're not so afraid to be there. They see me, I'm out on the edge, I'm trying things, I'm okay, so they'll just take a step. They'll try one more. They see that they're not slammed down, so they take one more step. Did you actually ask some questions after they finished the pilot about benefits and you know, what, what kind of benefits did they come? Yeah. We had about 12 people who originally had said they would want to do something, and eight of them made some type of an artifact, some type of an animated GIF, some type of a, um, a spreadsheet, a, a something that, that they could use. And at the end of it, I went ahead and recorded them. I did some audio interviews with them. And they were able to tell me what they liked, what worked and what didn't work. And some really interesting parts of that were the technology transfer that they found, and I'll give you one example of that. Um, one gentleman had been trying a lot. He had a certain process where he had this stuff, this sticky, gooey stuff, it's called an elephant snot. Getting very tight. Yes, yes, we had, we had some elephant snot. And as the elephant snot got warmer, it changed in how it moved. It was important to understand this from process. He had been talking with a person from Asia trying to tell them what was going on. He'd send videos, he'd talk to them in person, he'd send photos, nothing was working. He came in, he saw, learned how to do an animated GIF. He made that, did it three different temperatures, sent it, he said instantly they got it. They understood by through that visual, also going globally, it's difficult with bandwidth issues when you're in different countries. And they were able to see it, he could send it, they could ask questions about it, they could see just that one part over and over again. They talked about the this we were hearing yeah. about that perhaps an important project for us. So I remember hearing about that. How how I mean so you, your sense is that it's important for us to find some way through to this open web. Yes. And and why? Um as as we've been talking about the corporations more and more need to be able to collaborate. 3M has had an ability and an edge on other companies because we are like 60 small companies together and we're all talking to each other. Um, but we're losing that advantage. And we've got 15%, of course. And yes, and we have our 15% time. So 15% of your time, you're allowed to be creative. One day a week, you can work on pretty much something that is whatever you want as long as it's for the company. And of course, there's that video that was uh, on. <laughs> Uh, made us watch the other day about you know open cultures and creating open cultures and how that helps innovation and of course that's the business angle isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's important, it's important. So what are the challenges that you see having done this? Just that, you know, I'm not aware that this has really been done to consider taking a complete, we say open and we think it's like wide open at least to the world and there's ways of being internally open that are mm -hmm. important. Patronus is the connector. Well, what I see here, which is helpful, is to maybe separate out the idea of, you know, open technology, open community, open methods of interacting, isn't it? I and mean, that's really what we're talking about. So that uh, we can't do open technology because we are free end. Yes. But the other stuff, maybe it's something that we can do and we can learn from the stuff that you've done uh, out in the open. Mm -hmm. open. And by me being in both worlds, mm -hmm. instead of being a consultant coming in or just on one side, mm -hmm. I can act as, you know, the 3M Tegadrum, mm -hmm. where, where that, that, that strip that you have, the bandage where it can breathe, mm -hmm. um, and only the good stuff comes in and the bad stuff, you know, and that works. So it's like that. We have a corporate firewall, but we're able to let some stuff go out that should go out, and good stuff come in. The DS-106 was able to come in and I was there to say, is this technical? Okay, we can't put that out. Yes. So that would also, uh, if we were to have many of you, yes, uh, all the time, mm -hmm. that could be something that we could do with something else other than digital stories. I think there's there's some people here at the table who could be others, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what, what, what maybe they should provide some input right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's Q and A. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> got any other questions, anything that you're kind of interested in, in finding out, because I'm going to have to bring this to a close in about seven minutes. Tops. <laughs> I have a question. 
Yeah, go on, go on. Yeah. So, it, it is just a, so this is really exciting for me because I'm really excited about pushing sort of stuff that I'm doing within academia into industry and exploring that space between academia and industry. Um, but what's next for 3M? What's next for 3M? What's next for 3M is I'm 3M. <laughs> so because of the 15 percent time, we can go under the radar. And I have, I'm slowly building it out. And what we did is we put this into a year long now, sponsored by the Technical Collaboration Chapter, the, our R&D our organization. We opened it up to more people if they, if they wanted to come in. So now it's not just R&D. It is some, a couple of other people who are doing it. And we're testing it out. So it's a little bit and then a little bit more, and we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to be careful not to activate the corporate immune system. Which is which is a difficult which is a difficult thing until um, I think somebody was talking about it the other day that we don't we don't do something or we're afraid to do something if we don't know about it and it looks really scary for us to be talking with people on the outside and people bringing things on the inside there has to be some trust that is built up there and I'm trying to to do that it's a, it's a tricky place and we, what you're talking about having other people do it. Yeah, this is doable, but it takes a lot of work to hold the foundation, to set up the scaffolding, the, to support the structure so that it looks all nice and easy and people are all comfortable, but there's a lot that goes on behind it. And, and I think you make it easy to uh, take for, for granted the kind of role that Rochelle is playing in all of this, because, uh, and I often say this to you informally, because uh, there is the whole issue of uh, Rochelle having uh, been involved in the S106 for a long, long time, so she is really a you know, full member of that community and understands the content and is able to work with all of that, as well as years of working with the EM and being able to then build things together that would fit within the organizational culture. Um, that getting a lot, of, a lot of Rochelle's in any business is not straightforward. <laughs> the, the technical stuff too. You know, when we had technical problems when we were starting here, that's all the time. Our technical stuff is, I don't know about your organizations, but ours is bad. And <laughs> what I say is, it's bad. Whine about it, get over it. This is what we have to work with, and figure out how to do it. To me, that's creative, and I'm on the edge, and everybody, the, having the horizontal, not this hierarchy that I'm the teacher, I'm there learning like everybody else. When we have a meeting, I'm there, oh, interesting, we're online and we're typing away, and oh, that's very interesting, and it's genuine. So they feel comfortable with doing that too. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it is, and I have a follow up. Do you, do, you see, uh, do you see similarities, and perhaps this address more to Mariana, most similarities for a, a big institution, a big academic institution, who is sort of looking scarily at open. Because uh, I'm hearing lots of comparisons, uh, lots of similarities there, what you're saying, from the point of view of, uh, of, of, of industry. As well, well I, su I suppose if you, uh, if you take uh, a university as an organization uh, uh, and, and how it is set up, often with lots of rules, as we've been hearing through the conf conference, often set up with rules uh, that are you know, behind the times, really, in terms of what students might be and so on. Uh, then I guess that yes, you know, you could just just make very direct comparisons, uh, where perhaps some of us who are in institutions wanting to, in a sense, have the kind of role that uh, Rochelle has in 3M, um, and I guess we maybe need to need to learn from you about being under the radar more. <laughs> I don't know, but yes, I think there is a very much a link. You can't do this as a. Um, uh, like, I'm staying away from human resources and staying away from learning development <laughs> because they want to systematize it and what are the top practices, this is what we want to do and there is not a learning environment that actually goes on there. It's rote and people continually say that they like this better, that they don't get that same thing and so we have to try and avoid them. So it's the same tension, I think, between the sort of policy and the making that. Um, if I play devil's advocate here for a moment, mm -hmm. is, is there a sense of that 3M is exploiting this, this something that's been made available openly you know, to the community and has built up a reputation? Is 3M exploiting that, using it internally, but then not giving anything back? I'm just, oh, no. I'm just asking those questions. Do you, 
Well, I mean, first of all, there's nothing to be exploited in the first place. But second, uh, I Amy mean, Rochelle's role was not only bringing DS-106 in, she continually shared what was going on with that group back with us. And I mean, we, we got to see things that people were doing that, that some of them I hadn't seen before, the way people considered uh, using some of this media. And um, so, you know, I, I don't worry about it as anything being stolen. And in fact, you know, it's contributing. And when Rochelle told me that she was going to do this, I was like, that's kind of crazy. You know, how, how are you going to make this work? So it was for us a grand experiment to see um, how, because everybody says, DS-106 is great, but yeah, it works in a, in a creative, uh, an academic area, you know, it can't work in math or it can't work in other domains, and, and it did. And you know, a different flavor of it. I'm teaching a I'm teaching a class right now. Um, it's for uh, it, they're full time employees of a major U.S. consulting company. They all work for Deloitte, um, but they're taking a the graduate program. So, but we're not working with inside the firewall. But they're coming in with the corporate mindset, and they, they work a lot in training, and development, and HR. Uh, but their director wanted sort of a different approach to the way people learn how to communicate. And I would say, this is a personal personal view, um, I think that um, we've had, because of the setup of, of, the, of your, uh, the one the course that you're doing right now, we, outside, in terms of the, the open participants, haven't really had a lot to do with uh, what they're doing. But I think in the case of Rochelle, because she was investing a lot of time to bring back, and, and she would republish posts that other people were, you know, that the people inside 3 air were happy to do. Uh, we really felt like we were learning with them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Much more. I asked, when I talk to the staff internally, they always say, oh, I'm going to put, um, I want them to put BY as their standard. Uh, create common lives, but they always want to put them on conversion. Yeah. Yeah, there's that thing about, you know, oh, no, we don't want anybody to make any money out of this, or benefit commercially. Yes. And I just wonder how, how whether you have those conversations or whether you just discounted that. It's with it DS106, it's easy, but no one. I, I've heard that forever, and yeah. I can't say I've heard of too many cases where someone's really no. gotten rich off of someone else's content. <laughs> No offense, I mean, it's good stuff, but it's not commercial great. Johnny is, of course. You might save a lot of money. You might save money. Yeah. You know, that's another way of saying But it's interesting, I know, because when you know, when I teach my class, you know, the first thought that students is, is I don't want to share my stuff because someone's going to steal it. And I think people come in with this mindset of their ideas can be stolen. That's the yeah. question. Can I offer a share do you think the, 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 the corporate immune system you talked about would be as much worried by the openness or by the creativity? Wow. <laughs> that is such a good question. <laughs> because of the particular group that I'm in in representing the technical people in R&D, that and our 15% time in 3M prides itself on being innovation, they can't really say no to that part. They politically, they kind of have to go along with, with this stuff of being creative. But I have been told in the past things like, oh, she just makes fancy presentations. And so it can be used against you. There are sharks that you have to do. And the second part of your question was, so that was the creativity part. I was just wondering whether the creativity would be more an issue than the openness. Okay. The, the openness is the biggest one. That's the biggest, and we and we also published everything's internal except for the stuff that I republished and with permission. We have our own internal blogs. We have our own internal. Yeah. Blogs. Well, there's, there's a follow-up to that. I mean, did, have you heard about open innovation? Uh huh. Yep. There, in terms of there, because it, it, it does seem to be seeping a bit more into the commercial world about open innovation yes. and a bit more sharing, even if it's not openly done, but sharing between organisations. Correct. But this this that stuff. It sounds like three M. No, no, they're not. They would like um, the. What I see is that we need to be there because I'm on the edge of how collaboration works, and it's something that I. Do. We need to be there. If we don't, our corporation is going to die. And we used to be able. We had open innovation within our corporation because we're an 80,000 person company. Um, we used to have that advantage, 
but we don't now. Other companies are doing the external. They're working with all people. We don't have the skills to do it. When we've tried to do it, it doesn't work. So independently, I'm finding a way to get in there and help to make it happen. Even if I only have those five people, those eight people now, and another eight people that are doing it the next time around, they work with something, they work with something, and it goes out, and I see those ripple effects. And that's what keeps me excited. And the important thing there is that um, you're, you're using ES106 uh, as a way to, to help the collaborative yes. thing. So they're making things together, but of course a, a, a byproduct of that becomes collaboration. And now that you've opened it to people other than the R&D, then the hope would be that that will spread. Yes. And we have a lot of lurkers as well. People who are not participating, but who are doing things and who are watching and will contact me or somebody else later on to ask, oh, how did you make that video? I want to do that. How did you make this particular GIF? And that's exciting also. Thanks. I think we're right out of time for it's my clock. So, but we do have a break coming up when I'm sure colleagues are around to network. If you'd like to see our, the, the whole video piece, we can play that. It's about seven to eight minutes, and you can go in and out. Would you like to, to see it? Yeah. Yeah. You, you can see some of their artifacts and things. Yeah. Before the music strikes up, and I'll get there, can I just take this last opportunity to thank first of all, all of you for turning up early this morning as well, late night last night, and contributing really good debate to our five speakers for excellent contributions. I've really enjoyed them. And thanks, last but not least, to our technical support guy here. <laughs>